Hey guys, it's Sarah here. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the assessment signs that you have to know for your Family Nurse Practitioner Board examination. And by assessment signs, I mean like the Gray Turner sign, the Murphy sign, the Carlin sign, etc. So before I get started, if you want all this in a PDF form, just look at the comment section below so you could print it out. Okay, so first we're going to be talking about the Gray Turner sign. It looks like a bruise pretty much on the flank area, so the sides where the kidneys are. So this could indicate retroperitoneal hemorrhage. And there's a picture over there, so it's quite simple. You see that's the side of the man, and that is like a big purple bruise there. The way I like to remember this is gray turner, so it has the word gray in it, so it's a color. So just think of this coloration. And the next one is Colin sign. It's also a bluish discoloration, but it's around the umbilicus. And the way I like to remember this sign is because Cullen's is like culinary, and people like to have like pretty colors with further culinary. So gray turners, gray, that's a color. So you have your blue, purple discoloration on the flank. And Cullen, so your cutlery, you have a blue discoloration on your umbilicus. The next one is kerosene. When the patient is going to lie down, they're going to have severe left shoulder pain. And this indicates a spleen rupture or ruptured ectopic pregnancy. So I just like to remember this as cares. It ends with S. So S supine severe spleen. So SSS. Okay, next we're going to be going on to is McBurney. So McBurney is basically in the right lower quadrant. They're going to have tenderness. And it's going to be between the iliac crest and the umbilicus. And the way to find that is that you find the umbilicus, which is the belly, and you find the ASIS, which is basically on like the hip bone over there, and you draw an imaginary line. And two thirds the way between that, you're going to push down. If there's tenderness at this location, then it could indicate appendicitis. So McBurney's, you can remember Mick in the middle, and that's going to be appendicitis. The next one is Rofsing sign. Rofsing sign is you're going to palpate the left lower quadrant, but you're going to have pain in the right lower quadrant. So if you remember, all these are for appendicitis because appendix is located in the right lower quadrant. So you're going to be palpating the left lower quadrant, you're going to feel it in the right lower quadrant. And that's Rofsing. And the way I like to remember this is sing. So when you sing, you go in all different notes, like you jump from this to that, to that, to that. So over here, it's the left lower, but really you fill in the right lower. The next one is obturator sign. And how you test this is, you, is you're going to lay the patient flat and you're going to internal and externally rotate and flex the right hip. And then they're going to feel right lower quadrant pain. The next one is Pessoa sign. And how you test this is that the patient's again going to be lying flat. And you're going to place the hand on the right knee. Have them raise the knee against the force. If there's tenderness, then it's a positive sign. So, so again, McBurney's, Rothstein, Obturator, and Pessoa sign all indicate appendicitis. And how I like to remember this is PROM. So PROM stands for Pessoas, R stands for Rothstein. O stands for obturator, M stands for McBurney, so PROM. Okay, next we go on to the Murphy sign. And the Murphy sign is basically they're going to be laying flat on their back again. And you're going to place your fingers in the right costal margin. If you look in the picture, you can see where that is. And you're going to ask them to take a deep breath. If their gallbladder is inflamed, then they're going to have like sudden sharp pain. And that's going to cause them to stop breathing for a second. And that's going to indicate that the gallbladder is inflamed. And a way I like to remember that is you have the U for Murphy and you place it under the patient's right costal margin. The next one is Blumberg sign, which is also known as rebound tenderness, which is basically when you're pressing on the abdomen and then suddenly you remove your hands and they have pain there. That indicates peritone peritonitis. And then the next one is heel drop sign, which is also known as Markle sign. And what that is that they're going to be standing on their tippy toes. Then they're going to drop their heels to the ground. And it's going to cause pain in their abdomen. You could also strike the patient's heels and it will cause pain in their abdomen. And that indicates appendicitis. And the way I like to remember that is, is that it's a heel drop sign. So it has a heel. So a heel is like an appendix of a shoe. You know, it like sticks out. Okay, next one is Tenel sign. So Tenel sign is basically you're going to be tapping over the median nerve which if you look in the picture, it's right over there. 
and they're going to have tingness and tingling and numbness. And if they do, then it's positive for carpal tunnel syndrome. And the way I like to remember this is tunnel tap, T T, tap tunnel. The next one is Fallon sign. And this is basically you put your hands in prayer position and you turn it upside down. So it's it's um, inverted prayer position. You can hold it for a minute, and if they have numbness and tingling, then it's positive for carpal tunnel syndrome. And that's easy also because P for prayer, opposite of prayer. Okay, next we go on to Kernick sign. So Kernick sign is that you're going to place their knee 90 degree angle and slowly extend it. And they're going to have pain. If there's pain, then it's positive, and then that's a sign of meningitis. The next one is Brudzinski sign. And this is you're going to flex the patient's head, and they're automatically going to go into flex position. And this is also going to indicate meningitis. So for meningitis, you want to remember Koenig and Brudzinski. The next one is Shavak sign. And that's basically you're going to tap on the facial nerve and the muscles get a twitch. So they're going to have like a twitch in their face. And that's going to indicate hypocalcemia. I like to think of like chocolate and calcium and chocolate. So, you know, hypocalcemia, chocolate has calcium and chovexide. Trousseau sign is you're going to have a blood pressure cuff. You're going to inflate it. And gradual flexion, as you see in the picture, the patient's hands come into flexion of the wrist, thumb, and fingers are going to occur. And this is going to indicate hypocalcemia also. And the way I like to remember this is that trousseau, it sounds like a fancy chocolate. And then you remember the calcium in the chocolate. As always, you don't have to, um, you know, if you don't like the tint, you can just skip over. There's just ways that I like to remember it. And if it helps you, it helps you. Okay, now we go on to the anterior drawer sign. This is you're going to place a patient supine, so they're going to be laying down. And you're going to bend the knees 90 degrees, like in this picture. And the hip is going to be flexed at 45 degrees. You're going to pull, put your hands on both sides of the lower knee, and you're going to put pressure be, behind the knee to move the leg forward, exactly like in this picture. This is going to indicate an ACL tear. And the way to remember that is anterior drawer, A, A. ACL tear, anterior drawer. The next one is McMurray sign. What you do over here is you hold the heel with one hand and the knee with the other hand. You're going to externally and internally rotate their knee. So you're going to have your hands on one heel. You're going to have your hand on the knee and you're going to externally and internally rotate their, their knee. If you hear a click or popping sound, then it's going to be positive. That's going to indicate a meniscal tear. So that also, MM, Niskel McMurray. So these are easy, even if you don't remember exact ones, let's just say on the exam you have a question that says McMurray's. And if you remember MM, but you don't remember what it indicates, then if the answer choices are ACL injury, it's not that because that one doesn't start with an M. So meniscal is M, McMurray is M. The next one is the Lachman sign. And this, the knee is going to be at 20 degrees. You're going to put a hand above of the knee to stabilize the femur and one hand below the knee and you're going to pull the anterior, anterior and posterior. This is going to be ACL injury. And a way I like to remember all the ones for like the musculoskeletal system is LAM, Lachman, McMurray, anterior draw. So LAM. And the hint for that is that like with sports and everything everyone's like all tough but really they're soft like a lamb. Next we go on to the Finkelstein test and this is you're going to have your hand in a fist with a thumb inside, and you're going to slowly go on to ulnar deviation. If there's pain, and it's positive for tenosynovitis. The way I like to remember this is Finkelstein. Just think of like a book reading, and then you'll remember, you know, how you read with like your fingers pointing down. Holman sign. Holman sign is that they're going to passively dorsiflex the ankle. If there's pain in the calf, then it's positive for a DVT. Front sign. So this is a way to differentiate between epididymis and testicular torsion. If you, if when you elevate the testes, you have no pain, so your pain goes away, then it's usually epididymitis. If it makes the pain worse, then it's testicular torsion. Now we like to remember that is friend because that's not something you want your friend to perform on you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more, and stay tuned. Bye.